Ladies and gentlemen, I want us to visualize a situation where Oscar Sudi, the CAPSA right member of parliament, has organized a huge political event in Eldoret town to castigate William Samoy Arapruto. I want you to visualize the outcome of such a rally. Or let me let me put it differently. I want you to visualize a situation where the Kibra member of parliament, Imran Okoth, has organized a big political rally in Kibra to castigate Raila Amolodinga. Or let me put it again this way. The Bondo member of parliament, Gideon Ochanda, has organized a huge political rally in Bondo town to castigate Raila Amolodinga. What do you think would be out the outcome of such a meeting? Last week, we witnessed Moses Kuria, who is the member of parliament for Gatundu South, organizing a huge political event. And he invited none other than the deputy president, Dr. William Samara Pruto, to Gatundu South, just right at the gate of President Rukenyata. And they used that event to castigate President Uhuru Mugekenyata. And nothing happened to them. Of course, there were a few people who carried placards that respect President Uru Kenyatta. But it ended there. Which means there are certain things which can only happen to President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta. They can't happen to any other individual. The truth of the matter is that William Samoya Arapruto took the war right to the doorsteps of, the deputy of President Uru Kenyatta. And Uhuru Kenyatta did nothing. I can assure you, there is no way Uhuru Kenyatta can take such kind of a war to Eldoret. Or there is no way William Ruto can take such kind of a war to Raila Odinga's doorstep in Bondo, Kisumu, or let's say, even in Kibera, which is a cosmopolitan town. Which begs the question, how did President Uhuru Muge Kenyatta lose control of the larger Mount Kenya region to the deputy president, Dr. William Somoy Arapruto. In this video, I want to look at how Uhuru lost control of the larger Mount Kenya region to the deputy president. Because what we know now is that the president is actually working extra hard to regain control of the larger Mount Kenya region. We, don't, we still don't know whether he will succeed because, like, for example, he's supporting Raila Odinga and we are not even sure whether he's going to get 40%, leave alone 50%, because President Ruki Nyata's support to Raila Mulodinga would have automatically translated to over 60 or 70% of his supporters, trans I mean, his supporters transferring their allegiance automatically to Raila Mulodinga. But that's not happening. Why, why do you think Uhuru lost control of the Leja Mount Kenya region to his deputy? Before we get into all those details, if you are watching this channel for the first time, I want you to take a second or two, click that subscribe button, so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue to thank you guys for your continued support. Without the support, this channel cannot be where it is. Please, I'm in Mombasa, I'll be going back to Kisumu tomorrow, so I want you guys to show me love just by giving this video thumbs up and dropping your comments. And the best again is to share the video. I want to try to be a bit brief because I'm expecting a friend who is coming. Where I am. Now, why do you think Uhuru Kenyatta lost control of the larger Mount Kenya region? The first thing is that he overtrusted William Samoy Arapruto. Immediately, Uhuru and Ruto joined the government, they became comrades. They didn't realize that there was nothing ideologically which was connecting Ruto and Uhuru. There was nothing ideologically. Ruto was coming from a totally different background. Uru was coming from a totally dif different background. These guys met in Kanu because of Moi. But nothing connected them. So when ICC happened, William Ruto was on the other side. Uru Kenyatta was on the other side. So what brought them together was actually the ICC, which can be attributed also to the National Intelligence Service. The NIS didn't want Raila Odinga to become the president. So they figured out the best way to stop Raila Odinga from becoming the president was to get the support of Rift Valley from Raila Odinga. And the only way 
of getting that support from Raila Odinga was to incite Ruto against Raila. So they did, incited Ruto, convinced Ruto to move, and Ruto moved before he knew they were together. He was the running mate. So after they won, Uhuru Kenyatta overtrusted Ruto. He overtrusted Ruto with his party, management of Jubilee as a political party. According to President Uhuru Kenyatta, according to what he was telling the elders, was that Ruto convinced him that he needed to run the country. You just focus on the country while I manage politics. <laughs> that is exactly what those guys also cheated. Uh, Sonko was smart a bit, but that's, that's actually how Sonko was also cheated. That, I mean, that's how Sonko cheated uh, Igade. That Igade was going to run the government while Sonko was going to run politics. It never works like that. You must run politics and you must run government. So Uru Kenyatta focused on running the government. And he left the management of Jubilee Party to William Ruto. So when it reached 2017, William Ruto knew so well that he had a campaign in 2022. And he also knew that by 2015 here, there were some disputes. So what he did was to start plotting. So the deputy president really plotted. And he plotted, and by the time the president realized, the deputy president had installed his cronies as members of parliament, some as senators, some as governors. And the deputy president by that time had also managed to kick out President Ruru Kenyatta's key allies, whom he viewed as potential threats to his bid. So he overtrusted the deputy president. And I don't know whether that's why he's very bitter with the DP. So that's number one. Number two, the second cause why the president lost control, in my view, is the fact that President Ruru Kenyatta actually detached himself from his key supporters. You know, our politics is tribal. And apart from tribal, it has bases. For example, Relu Dinga had his base in Nyanza, in Nairobi. Relu Dinga had strong base in Western, and he also had a very strong base in uh, the coastal region. Those are the truths. President Rukinyata had his strong base, his stronghold, which was in the mountain. Ruto brought the Uru had mountain, Ruto brought the Rift Valley. So the moment William Ruto took control of uh, the mountain, it means Uru Kenyatta now then was left empty. He didn't have any strong ground. So the other mistake he did was that instead of now focusing on uh, his people, Uru Kenyatta forgot and started working that he was working. You can't work for the people when you don't understand their politics. So he detached himself. So a lot of things were happening. People were complaining about high cost of living. People were complaining about their businesses being destroyed. People were complaining about SGR. The Kikuyu nation who are majority in business in, in the, in the in, uh, industrial area were complaining. Guru never listened to them. Guru Kenyatta focused on delivery to an extent that so many people actually displaced to pave way for development projects without considering that these guys actually voted for President Rukinyata. So by the time President Rukinyata was now coming back, it was late. The deputy president had gone. He had made the president to appear as if he was uh, the bad one. Then he had taken credit, credit, I mean, credit as if the deputy president was the best thing to ever happen. So Uhuru Kenyatta ought not to have forgotten that number one, the people who voted for him were Kikuyus. Number two, the people who voted for him were in Jubilee. And therefore, the people he needed most, the people he needed their support most, were actually the Kikuyu Nation and Jubilee, not to detach himself from them. So that's number two. The third cause why Uhuru lost control, in my view, is that apart from overtrusting the deputy president, President Ruru Kenyatta underrated William Ruto. You know, William Ruto was scheming. Uru Kenyatta thought that they had won the government. He was going to ensure that after his term, the deputy president was going to take over. The deputy president had a different idea that in politics, there is no trust. There is no, the only interesting, I mean, the, the only common thing is interest and betrayal. So he was prepared for the betrayal. So the deputy president started scheming on how to consolidate the mountain without the support of the president. 
and that's how in the last five years he managed and i want to ask you a question how many times do you think the duty president has gone to the people of the larger mount kenya region after they voted for him zero the truth of the matter is that the moment these guys voted for uru kenyatta the moment uru kenyatta was sworn in that's the moment uru kenyatta disappeared he would only attend funerals and uru kenyatta would only give some roadside declarations or maybe lecture some leaders from the region he failed to understand that the duty president was reading him he underrated the determination of William Ruto to sustain the politics in the larger Mount Kenya region. So that's number three. Number four, in my view, I think the handshake politics also became a major contributing factor to President Uru Kenyatta, Uru Kenyatta losing the grip of the mountain. Why? There was a, a handshake which came after a bitterly contested election. If you look at the way Raila Odinga managed the handshake and the way Uhuru managed the handshake, they were totally different. Raila Odinga went and explained to his people that at way, there are so many ways of killing a rat. So you can give the rat a poison, you can give the rat a, a trap, amunaiza kimbiza to rat. So according to Raila Odinga, he had tried all those and this time round he laid a trap for them. So his supporters started believing in him. What about Uru Kenyatta? Uru Kenyatta disappeared went underground and assumed those guys were going to come. His supporters, his members of parliament were going to come for him. So Uhuru Kenyatta basically never understood that Raila Odinga had been made a common enemy in the Kikuyu nation for so long. He failed to understand that after this handshake, he needed to go to the ground, especially with Raila Odinga, and explain to his supporters why that handshake took place. You know, sometimes when things happen and you don't react, it might take time. But Kenyans and even people in general will be wait waiting to see how you are going to react. The truth of the matter is that there was propaganda again about this handshake. The president ignored everything and it's already late for him to use that handshake to his advantage. And lastly, I think Uhuru Kenyatta should also blame his allies, especially those who control the state. You know, there are certain things which are happening in this country which could not happen when Kibaki was the president or when Moi was the president. Uru Kenyatta let them happen. During Moi's era, there were so many powerful people. And these powerful people could advise the president in the right way. We had uh, the what? We, at some point, we had the Asai Yogi. We had people like Mike Toh, people who would tell the president the truth. What we are witnessing here is a group of people, people like Karanja Kibicho, Murabe, Kamanda. You know, they just used to tell president what the president wanted to hear. Some of them never even thought about the action they were likely to take, the actions they were taking. So I don't know what you think, but for me, I think President Rukinyata has lost the grip of the mountain. I can't bet whether he's going to win or to win the back. But what I can tell you is that he is going to struggle to win that support back. Until next time, this is Lee McQueen. Bye-bye.